Time to continue now on up to Port Owlsworth. I'm John from Fly 8 Mike Alpha, CFI turned airline pilot turned back to CFI. Come along on my journey, flying Alaska to Florida and beyond. Last time on Flight Mike Alpha, we did some pre-flight planning on the iPad, hit the grocery store for some survival food, then shot out of Anchorage across the Little Susitna River and right on into some pretty nasty weather. It's really rare you get thunderstorms in Alaska, but we happened to find one. Luckily, you know, we maintained the whole 1.1 miles of his building in clear clouds, so we were all good there. And then as we came up to Lake Clark Pass, got into some pretty good turbulence, kind of bouncing off the ceiling there for just a moment, reminding ourselves what moderate to severe turbulence really feels like before finding our way into Lake Clark Pass for some absolutely amazing, breathtaking views on our way up to Port Ellsworth. Now, weaving your way through these passes can be a little tricky sometimes to know what's good and what's a dead end, literally like a dead end if you turn down that way. So paying close attention to the iPad here and really trying to pick our way through the best route possible, minding the turbulence and the weather. Yeah, they're kind of, uh, these clouds are kind of here to kick your butt. Yeah. So nice and slow, we'll bust through it. The other thing is hopefully tomorrow we can get out. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> oh yeah, we can, uh, we'll try to get an idea what the weather's going to be doing and we got Two days of food. Yeah. Do you want, do you think we should take the left route? I think that's the... The right one seems to go lower. The right one is lower because it's over water. But it's steeper, it looks like. Although... A little narrower. I don't know, I'll leave it up to you. I would probably go left, but yeah, that's just me. nicer. Yeah. So yeah, we decided to go left and it's kind of crazy how fast the weather changes. All these really local little microclimates, basically, all throughout the mountains with little bits of rain here, sunshine there, and crazy turbulence here and there. Port Ellsworth traffic, 60 deltas, uh, just passing Port Ellsworth, 2,400 southwest. Hey, 60 delta, if you're looking for a place to explore on this side, uh, Port Ellsworth is about as nice as it gets. Yeah, do you think they care if, uh, if we ride our bikes around and stuff? Nah, it's, it's real nice. It's a very friendly community. It's awesome. Wait, let's go. Cool. I think I'm going to go for it then. Thanks for that. Six adult is on our right downwind for five left. Port us with. That's a left downwind. I mean, <laughs> correction, left downwind. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're the only ones out here. Oh, overshoot. <laughs> go around. Really? You're fine. Take your time, just get a full flaps in there and get down. Yeah, I just go all the way down to the end of that runway and uh, there's a little coffee stand. And we're in Port Ellsworth. <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So what are we gonna do now? Wander, walk, uh, food? Are you hungry? Uh, <laughs> I will be later. Yeah. It's civilization. I don't know when the next civilization occurs. We don't know that yet. Yeah, next civilization could be like a while. This is how you know aviation's really big in Alaska. When you have an entire town with about 200 people, yet they still need two runways. <laughs> five left and five right. <laughs> This is where the outgoing mail goes. Outgoing to MRI, leaf blowers, important stuff. <laughs> and if you live here, this is presumably where you get your mail from. So, yeah. This is super impressive though that Amazon Prime gets delivered to Port Ellsworth, Alaska. So it didn't take all but about 30 minutes. We had seen all of Port Ellsworth and it was time to go to King Salmon. Onward to King Salmon. Do it. All right, so to get out of here, 
we're gonna go from wherever this is. Fort Ellsworth. Fort Ellsworth. <laughs> Not Ellsworth. Ellsworth. <laughs> so we can basically just go straight up the lake, and then yeah, right over to King Salmon. Nope, that's a nope. yeah gig. Nope, that is not King Salmon. Right King over to Salmon. <laughs> King Salmon. There it is, right here. Right there, little Delta Airport, and do some camping. All right, room, room, let's go. Okay, no kids on the runway, four wheelers, dogs. Yeah, looks good to me. Charlie Clark, traffic land three two Charlie three Island northeast bound one thousand nine hundred. Woo! We ha. Uh... A little gust. Yeah. A little dip in the runway too. Whoa. It's bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Man, the wind picked up too. Yeah. White caps since we landed. Wow, that water is so crystal clear. Pretty sweet. Beautiful. So as it became time for us to get the AWOS for King Salmon, there was a harmless little note on there about there being construction all over the airport, but it turned out I learned something new that day because of that. Remark, use caution for work in progress, construction on all airport surfaces, runway 12 ILS and approach lights are out of service, to King Salmon VOR and TAC and Azimuth are out of service, runway 12 and 30 Pappies are out of service, the tower will resume normal operations at 8 a.m. So I've flown to plenty of airports that are under construction, and it seems most airports are always under construction. But I've never actually had a construction crew talk to me on the radio and coordinate clearing off the runway for me. King Salmon traffic, Cessna 296 to Delta's uh, 10 miles north will be inbound. King Salmon, currently 2500. We'll go ahead and fly a heading of uh, 140. Uh, King Salmon traffic, Beaver Zero, Charlie, we're... Three miles south, be straight in for three six. King Salmon. King Salmon Air Traffic Connect Construction Aircraft ten miles out. What is your ETA? Uh, ETA would be five minutes. Copy five minutes out, runway one eight three six will be open. Copy six to Delta. King Salmon Air Traffic, Connect Construction, Inbound Aircraft, 36 is clear for landing. Copy, thank you. Pavement just sucks. <laughs> Copy, clear, thank you, have a good night. Thank you too, good night. I'd note a little off topic here, but for all my Florida flyers out there, this symbology here over the water actually means pack ice, and that was something I was very unfamiliar with until I started flying in Alaska. But anyways, after we cleared the runway, taxied to the ramp, found a nice transient spot to tie down at, then got the bikes out, got them all assembled, and headed into town to go find a place for Steph's birthday dinner. So it may not be the most scientific approach, but I've come to determine my distance from Anchorage as directly proportional to the price of beer and food. So when it's $8 a pint, and mac and cheese with bacon on it costs $21 for a bowl, then you know you're probably roughly 200 plus miles from Anchorage. Either way, the food and beer was still really good, had an awesome birthday dinner, an amazing rainbow right outside, and a beautiful sunset as we started making our way back towards the airport to set up camp for the night. We got a great bike ride across the taxiways back to our little campsite with Steph's step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up a tent. So first I lay down the foundation. <laughs> Go through the steps here with me. Yeah. You lay down a good foundation. The, uh, just inspected it. Yep. And did it pass around. inspection? Did you find anything wrong, Sia? Nope, she shook her head. She said it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> 
So with the help of Sia and about 50 million mosquitoes, we got our tent set up, did our best to not let too many into the tent with us. These things are absolutely massive, and their bites are just as massive too the next day when they start to swell up. But we got the tent set up at midnight, that sky is still absolutely amazing in Alaska this time of year. And then try to get some sleep with the lovely ambiance of construction noise in the background. It is like a freaking horror movie. <laughs> Yep, airport camping, super, uh, super calming and relaxing. It's great. So it actually worked out pretty good having this little turbine otter come in and be our alarm clock for us. We decided to get on the bikes, head in town for stopping off at the NOAA weather station there. Try to get a little briefing on where we were heading out for the day, out to 10,000 smokes. We even found it buried in this Merriam-Webster place dictionary and then got to actually look at what they actually use to send the sensors up into the atmosphere. These little boxes are what they send up twice a day to get those readings up into the high atmosphere and be able to predict the weather all over the country. After a good breakfast, it was time for 10,000 smokes. Next time on Fly at Mike Alpha, all I can say is we go to one of the most beautiful places in the world. After blasting out 10,000 smokes, we head over to Hollow Bay and then jump across over to Kodiak Island, hook up with our good friend Paul. This guy's an absolute legend for helping us out while we were in Kodiak, and because of him, we have an amazing time on the island. Guys, I cannot even begin to describe how amazing 10,000 Smokes is going to be coming up here in the next episode. Make sure if you have not already, hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell right next to it to keep up with all our latest updates. You'll get notified when we post our next episodes. And I will see you guys in episode 8. Cake seven traffic. I mean, <laughs> Port Arlesworth traffic. Cessna 6 to Delta taxiing runway 2523. Cake seven. Or I can't two. talk. <laughs> We're not in King Salmon now. We're doing 2-3 right out of Port Ellsworth, <laughs> going to King Salmon. Okay. We got it now. Take two. <laughs> and...